are two sisters who believe that the purpose of life is to enjoy, create, and have fun. We believe that as humans, we can have anything we want, and things are always working out for us. Experience has taught us that the path to getting everything we want begins with ease. If you believe in miracles and happily ever after, or even if you just want to, then this is the podcast for you. Hi there. I'm your host, Kayla Rain. I'm your co-host, Adria Shea. And welcome back to Attract It With Ease. Hello again, Adria. How's it going? Hi, it's good. How are you? I'm great. Tell me what you're grateful for today and why. I am grateful for the ability to read. It seems almost self-evident, but I have, I mean, I wouldn't be the person I am without the ability to read. I've learned so much through reading. That's a good one. And these are all actually related. I'm grateful to have access to books. Um, Just being able to read isn't, I mean, it's probably the most important one, you know, but I, through various means, can access almost anything that I need to and learn about anything I need to. And then my third is, again, related, but I'm just grateful that people are willing to put their thoughts and ideas into words, that there are places that will publish that for market, that there are libraries and bookstores and Amazon and, you know, all of these pieces coming together to make it possible for me to say, well, you know, I'd like to learn more about whatever. And I mean, I'm, I'm looking at my bookshelf and, you know, I've got like four different books that I'm in the midst of on totally unrelated topics. Thanks to all of those pieces coming together. I love it. You know, I feel like books is kind of a dying legacy. Is that the right word? (laughs) They're still, they're still out there, but I feel like with the internet and everything kind of being digital and now of course you've got um, audio books and podcasts and things. I feel like actual hard books are not as common anymore. And so kudos to you for having a bookshelf and owning books and reading real books, because, you know, there's so many other ways to get that information today that I, I think it's fabulous when somebody actually sits down with a hardbound copy and takes the time to read instead of just, you know, listening while they're driving or not that there's anything wrong with that either, but I think that's incredible. Well, I do love audiobooks, but I definitely, my preference is something to hold in my hand and just really internalize the words on the paper. For sure. I find that when I read, obviously when I'm reading, it's slower than listening, but sometimes I'll highlight, sometimes I'll make notes, um, but I tend to retain the information better probably because I'm so focused on the words versus like we've said in the past about being present, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. when you're listening, your mind's on other things at the same time. So yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Well, this week I'm grateful for a few things. Number one, I'm grateful for ice and Ooh, specifically I... ice for cold beverages. <laughs> yes, I agree. We don't have an ice maker in our tiny house. We don't really have room for one and we don't have a traditional refrigerator. So we actually buy ice at the grocery store almost every single week. And I don't use ice for many things, but I definitely appreciate an ice cold drink. And I know that that's in some ways a American thing. I know in other countries, um, they don't necessarily prefer ice cold beverages, but there are some drinks that I just think are better cold and I'm, I'm appreciative of ice. <laughs> and that That's it's a, a great thing. one. <laughs> I'm also appreciative of organization. And what I specifically mean is we've been in our tiny house for an, a year and a half and it's so small. I just constantly feel like, oh my gosh, we have so much stuff and not enough space. And it just dawned on me in the last month that there are some areas in the tiny house that could be more organized, more, more functional than what they've been. And so I've actually bought a little shelving thing for the bathroom to organize all of my hair products and makeup and curling irons and toilet paper and things. And then I also um, bought another one for our pantry area. They're two totally different shelf things, but in the pantry area, I got some baskets to help organize you know, bags of chips or candy or like 
coffee pods for the Keurig and just things like that. And it is incredible what a difference it makes in how my home feels because instead of having like things on the floor or piled, you know, stacked up or, and I know that sounds messy. I actually live very clean. It's just so small that there's only so much space. And I don't know why it took me a year and a half to like go, Oh, maybe I could put a little shelf there. Maybe I could put those in some baskets, (laughs) but I really am appreciating that those inventions are available and that we have the ability to organize our spaces. So that's, that's a big one for me this week. That's a great one. And then number three, I I think I've said this before, but it's been a while, but I am grateful for my sisters. You know, I think about that all the time and we keep in touch, obviously, mostly through Marco Polo, which is a social media app where you send video messages back and forth. But I just have been thinking a lot about that lately and just how much I appreciate my sisters. They're pretty much my best friends, if not my very, very best friends. And I, I just love our relationship and that we're able to stay in touch um, in spite of the distance. So that's my gratitude this week. All right. So this week, Adria, I didn't even tell you what we're going to talk about this week. (laughs) (laughs) It could be anything. (laughs) Ooh, I'm so unprepared. (laughs) This week, um, I want to talk about, well, we've talked a lot about gratitude. We're going to talk about gratitude again this week, but I want to talk about the difference between saying that you're grateful or thankful for something versus actually truly feeling sincere gratitude. I want to talk about the difference and I want to talk about how those differences affect what we receive and what we attract. And I also then want to wrap up by giving our listeners an action item that's going to be a little bit challenging. And I might have mentioned this before on the podcast. I actually, as I was trying to plan today's episode, I thought, I think we might have mentioned this and that it may have even been a prior action item. But if it was, and if I did, and I'm not 100%, because I honestly can't remember, if I if it was a prior action item, I'll bet most of our listeners didn't do it. So it's going to be a good one to throw in this week. Okay, so let's start out and let's talk about emotionless statements that we make all the time. Things that we say that we don't really mean. Adria, when you go shopping, when you walk into a physical store, let's say it's a clothing store and you're greeted by a sales person, what do they usually say to you? What do they ask you? Can I help you find anything? Okay. And what do you say? No, I'm just looking. Okay. What's another thing they might say to you? Gosh, I don't know. I haven't been in a clothing store for <laughs> it could a really be, long it could time. Be a cashier. I'm just thinking almost every t- single time I go into a store, they ask me, hi, how are you today? Like, I okay, feel like yeah. that's just like the common thing. And we say that to like people at work. Hey, how's mm-hmm. it going? Hey, what's up? How are you? You know, and what do we always say? Fine. I'm fine. I'm good. Good. I'm good. Do you think that's sincere when we say it? When we're like, oh, I'm fine. I'm good. Well, I definitely think that they're not really asking to know how my day is. <laughs> no, they're not. And <laughs> how long honestly, do they have? Uh, right. And if you were having an incredible day, you might say something. Like, I mean, you might actually sincerely answer and be like, I'm so good. But if it was just a regular day, or even if you were having a bad day, you're probably not going to get into detail. You're just going to give them some flat answer because that's, it's just out of habit almost that we have those conversations. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you I know, agree. It, it's emotionless things that we say all the time. There's not really in there's not any sincerity behind what we're saying. So, I want to ask you: Have you ever had someone say something to you and they're actually insincere, and you know they're not sincere when they say it? Uh, specifically, have you ever had someone apologize to you, but you could tell they didn't really mean it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the worst. Like you, like somebody does something and then they're like, well, sorry. <laughs> sorry, you're upset about that. <laughs> well, sorry, my bad. You know, and you can almost hear it sometimes in their voice inflection. And yet we say things and we don't mean them. And we just have these, we just go through the motions in life and we say what's expected sometimes. And, and even when we actually appreciate something, Oftentimes we say thank you and it's, it's flat. It's not 
there's not really any emotion behind it. You know, someone opens the door for you when you're going into a restaurant or a business and you appreciate it, but you say, thanks. But you don't really stop and think about, oh, that was so nice. <laughs> I really appreciate that. You know, we don't have that kind of feeling behind it. It's just like, thanks, you know. And sometimes it's the opposite. If someone doesn't get the door for you, they walk into a building and they let the door shut behind them and they don't hold it for you. We could sit there resentful like, oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? And is it, we have these expectations and we just go through motions in life and we do things actually without sincere feeling. And so because we talk about gratitude a lot and we talk about how gratitude plays into the law of attraction, I think it's important to have a conversation about how it's one thing to say you're thankful or grateful for something. And it's a whole other thing to feel thankful or grateful. So let's just talk about that for a minute. Think of some things, Adria, that maybe you have said thank you for that really you haven't maybe it wasn't really that big of a deal and you didn't really feel, you know, one way or the other about it. It could be like someone getting a door for you, or it could be, um, I don't know, someone grabbing something off of a shelf for you or stepping out of your way or changing lanes because you were on their, you know, rear end (laughs) driving or something (laughs) and they move out of the way and you're like, thank you, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but you're not really feeling like, oh, that was so nice. I really appreciate that. So can you think of some situations where you have said thank you, but you actually weren't particularly grateful or thankful? It was just kind of like, I just said it because it was the right thing. I can think of some situations, but I'm not going to elaborate because... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> doesn't reflect nicely on me. <laughs> I think we all do that. I think we all go through emotions and I think we've all experienced that. Like I said, there's been times that someone says thank you or has said I'm sorry or whatever, and it's flat. It's insincere. It's not emotional. And the worst thing is when you do something for someone and you feel like they weren't very grateful or they didn't appreciate it or they didn't notice it. Um, and you know, I'm sure we all have experiences of that, but I can think of times when this is years ago, but when I've been dating and, you know, I drove somebody's, my, my date, I'll say my, probably my boyfriend, if I was doing this, but my boyfriend at the time, I can think of like driving his car for something and then just being nice and taking it through the car wash and filling it up with gas. And then like, I'm not even noticing, or maybe he noticed, but he never said anything. And it's like, uh, oh, well, why, did too I, bad. why did I even do that? You know, <laughs> or, or, you know, in, when, if they say thanks for certain things, and by the way, that wasn't Dan, that was, but I've had those kinds of experiences and I'm sure we've all had those sorts of experiences where you do something and you expect that someone's really going to appreciate it and they don't, you don't really get the acknowledgement that you were looking for. Um, but I can think of times when, you know, I've done things and I've received a thank you, but again, it wasn't what I was expecting. I just really thought like, oh, wow, they're really, you know, they're going to love this. They're going to appreciate it. It could be that I know somebody really loves something and I see it online or I see it in the store and I get it for them and I give it to them. And then they're like, oh, thanks. And you're like, wait. <laughs> yeah, I can relate to that. <laughs> I really thought you were going to be like so overwhelmed. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you did that. I can't believe you thought of me. That was so thoughtful. You know, that's what I'm looking for. And again, I'm not trying to set the tone that like only do things for appreciation, but I'm trying to give some examples of how in life we just sometimes, you know, we just go through motions and, and it's one thing to be grateful and say, thank you. And it's a whole other thing to think it. So there is, um, a course that one of our sisters told us about Adria. And I think, I can't remember if you did it um, or started it, but anyway, it's called the science of well-being. And I can't remember the instructor, but it is an instructor uh, from Yale that teaches us as a course at Yale. And she has made a free course on Corsica. And one of our sisters mentioned it and recommended that she said, I'm going to take this course and it's free. And, you know, if you guys want to do it. And so I remember signing up for this course and it's fascinating because the whole topic of this class is the science behind happiness. So it's not just talking about how to be a happier person, but it talks about why certain things 
don't make us as happy as that we thought they would, why we lose happiness, why um, happiness fades. And then it gives exercises and examples of some things that you should do to try and increase your happiness and try and shift some of those things. So anyway, in this, it, um, it talks about, you know, that oftentimes we are happy or grateful for something, but we say thank you. And then we move on. We don't like live in that phase of being grateful or, or, or focusing on it. It's kind of like, Oh, I got it. I achieved it. Okay. Now it's, we're, we're already on to the next thing. And so I think when we're manifesting things and things come about and it's something big, we're like, Oh my gosh, I finally received this. This is incredible. This is amazing. But at some point that feeling starts to dwindle and it wears off and the newness goes away. And now we have the thing and we aren't as grateful anymore. And one thing that I talked to Dan about a lot, and this is me being critical and again, throwing Dan under the bus on the podcast, (laughs) he's going to love this, but I think we all do this. And that's why I bring it up is that we achieve something. And instead of living or staying in that state of, oh my gosh, this is incredible. It's now we want the next thing. And so we're already feeling ungrateful or dissatisfied because we don't have the next step. We don't have the next thing. And I don't know, I'm trying to, you know, think of some examples, but it could be that, well, in Dan's situation, for example, he could say, oh, I don't have any photography work. I don't have anything going on. This could have been in the past. Um, He used to be freelance. So he was self-employed and he'd say, oh, I just, you know, I just, I need some work. And then something would fall out of the sky. Literally he'd get a call and somebody would, you know, pay him to shoot a wedding or to do an uh, adventure photography session or whatever. And he'd make, you know, a thousand or 1500 or $2,000 in one pop. And instead of sitting in this, like, oh my gosh, that's incredible. Like I just asked for it and it fell out of the sky. And now I have this money that I wasn't expecting and I can pay my bills. You know, it's like, it comes and it goes. And so you have this like brief relief, but then you're, the job is gone. The work is done. So he's already back to, I need work. I need work. And I'm, and I'll, I would have these conversations with him of, if you would just focus on the fact that it comes to you and you believe everything is always working out for me and you know, the universe will take care of you, then the the work will continue to come. But we skip over being grateful. And it's not even that we skip over it, but it's like, we don't stay in that state of like, oh my gosh, I really appreciate that I got this job and I have this money and I'm, I'm I'm so grateful that I can pay my bills and I don't have to stress about money. But in his mind, he's already thinking ahead and he's like, well, what about the bills for next month? And again, this is, this is in the past. This is when he was self-employed, but these are some of the examples of some of those conversations where we skip over the gratitude or we say we're thankful, but we're not actually being thankful. We're not actually being grateful because we don't stay in that state. We just kind of say thanks and we move on. You know, I've been thinking a lot about how we were raised to pray and when we would say a prayer over the food and we'd always say, thank you for the food, you know, blah, 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 blah. But we would always say that. I'm thankful for the food. We're thankful for the food. And I was really thinking about that this morning. And I thought, I don't know that I ever really was like, oh my gosh, I am so thankful for this meal. Maybe on Thanksgiving when it finally was ready and I'd been starving all day, expecting to eat at noon and dinner's ready at five. That's probably about the only time that I was like really thankful for the food. But I can say that there have been times in my life when money has been tight and I didn't know how I was going to buy groceries or I couldn't afford nice expensive groceries. We've talked about even like wine budgets and stuff and how nice it is to be able to buy nice wine and like, but there's times when money is tight and, and in those moments, you do really appreciate the food. You really appreciate it. And you're like, oh my gosh, I am so grateful that I actually can have wine with dinner tonight. Or I'm so grateful that we can afford to go out to eat because it's been months because money has been so tight. That is the feeling of gratitude, but it's crazy how we tend to go into those moments when we've gone through a period of lack. When we don't have something, then we really appreciate 
what we're missing. And when we get it back, just like you, Adria, were saying about Venmo, when we get it back, then we really appreciate, oh, I've missed this. You know, it's like if your refrigerator breaks and you're without a refrigerator for a few days, or if it's like our sister Shalise, she was out without a refrigerator for months, like you really appreciate your refrigerator. But we just don't go through life thinking about those things like, oh, I'm so grateful for my refrigerator and that it works. And I'm so grateful for my Venmo and then I can send money back and forth. It's like we freak out when we don't have it. And then when we get it back, that's when we have that feeling of gratitude of like, oh my gosh, I love this. I so appreciate this. And so Adria, as I'm talking about the contrast, tell me when you think about gratitude, and I'm not talking about the beginning of each episode because we had an episode on gratitude. I think it's even episode two where we talk about, okay, yeah, you're grateful, but why are we grateful? And we talk about that emotion of being grateful, but just in general, in life, when you think about things that you appreciate, do you feel like more often than not, you really take time to think through like, oh my gosh, I love that. I really appreciate that. Or do you think it's more of just like, oh, I'm glad I have that. I feel like since we've been doing this podcast and since we've been talking about this, I do try to feel more of the emotion behind the gratitude. At the same time, though, I, I, for me, it's hard to feel it deeply when I haven't experienced the lack of it. That's fair. That's really fair. So one thing that I want to kind of throw out there is it's like, okay, how do you feel? How do you really feel grateful? Like if you're focused on feeling grateful, how do you feel it? And this is something that I've experienced. And I honestly, I probably read it somewhere. So I'm not going to take credit for it because I probably didn't come up with this on my own, but I can't tell you where it came from. But probably about five years ago, I started the behavior of trying to take something that I'm grateful for focus on on it for a minute and repeat my gratitude verbally, whether it's out loud or in my head, usually it's in my head, but if I was alone, I might say it out loud. But let's say that I wanted to express gratitude for Dan, my fiance. You know, I could say, oh, I'm so grateful for Dan. And that's usually how it comes across the first time you think about it. You know, you're, you're grateful. But if I stop and I really think about what I just said and I repeat it again and I'm like, oh, I am so grateful for Dan. And as I'm saying this, I'm thinking through my head why I'm grateful for him or why I really appreciate him. I'm, I've stopped. I'm focused just on Dan. I'm thinking about one thing. I'm spending a few minutes thinking about him. So I start out like, oh, I'm so thankful for you. I'm so grateful for you. I really appreciate you. And then moving to, oh. I really am. I really appreciate him. And I'm thinking through my head because of this, because of this, because of this, but I don't just stop on number two. It's I moved to number three and I say it slow with an intention, like deliberate, slow. I am so grateful for Dan. And I stop and I think about all the reasons that I'm grateful for him. And if you do it, and I'm I'm talking through it right now, so it's not the same process as if I was really doing it because I wouldn't be describing it while I'm doing it. But I would start out like, I'm so grateful for Dan. I am so grateful for Dan. I am so grateful for Dan. And when I stop and I think about why, not just the words, but why. And I'm really focused on that. Why? Like we talked about in episode two, that's when I feel it. And when I go through this practice and I won't say I do it all the time, but when I'm really focused on gratitude and I'll tell you sometimes when I like deliberately focus on gratitude is because I really need something. (laughs) I really need to shift my vibration or I'm really trying to attract something. So I'm going to take some deliberate time to focus on gratitude. When I do that often, and it depends on what I'm expressing gratitude for, but often it makes me emotional. It kind of makes me cry because it's like, I recognize, I really am thinking about why am I so grateful for this thing or why am I so grateful for this person? And to me, that is real gratitude. And you don't have to stay there and focus on that person or that thing for, you know, an hour or for the day. But if you can spend three minutes instead of just being like, oh, thanks. No, thank you. 
No, really, thank you. I really appreciate that. And here's why. And sometimes it's literally just in our head. But we also have a tendency to express gratitude for other people for things that they do. And that's the whole concept of writing a thank you card, you know, an email. The written word is like such a lost art these days. But there's a big difference between telling someone thank you, like, oh, thanks for doing that. Thanks for the gift. I really appreciate that. And then taking it to the next step and writing them a thank you card. Adrian, the last time you received like a thank you card in the mail, how did it make you feel? I love it. I think it's so thoughtful. And there have been times where I've either gone to like a store and purchased something or maybe purchased something online. Occasionally I'll get a thank you card in those circumstances and it really stands out to me. Yeah. Like I said, it's, it is kind of a lost art and we're going to talk about that a little bit further as we go into our action item, but it's one thing to just say thank you. It's a whole other thing to take time to focus on why you're grateful and then to express that to somebody else. When somebody does something nice for you, to take a moment and tell them how much you really appreciate it. And it doesn't have to be a thank you card, but to really go that extra step. So it's not just a, oh, thanks. It's, no, really, I really appreciate that. And here's why. You know, um, I had someone send me something recently, just a thoughtful little gift with a nice card, um, probably within the last two months. And it was completely unexpected. But just to know that the person was thinking about me and that they saw something that reminded them of me. And so they bought it and they thought I would appreciate it and then took the time to write me a note and send it to me. It made my whole day. It made my whole week because it was just, you know, incredible. It was just like, you really went above and beyond. And I could have been like, oh, thank you. Or sent the text like, oh, thanks for the package. <laughs> you know, and how, how would that have come across? But when somebody goes that extra step, goes above and beyond, it's not saying that they expect a sincere thank you. Maybe they don't expect anything. Hopefully they expect nothing. But if that's the response they get is just a text like, oh, thanks for thinking of me. It's probably going to be a letdown to them. So it's kind of like, well, how do you match that gratitude? And I really thought about that. I thought, how do I say thank you to someone who just said thank you to me? And that's why they said it. They wrote me this sweet thank you card. I've been thinking about you. I saw this. I thought of you. And it really made me want to do something in return for them. And so it's kind of like, well, how do you match that? And I thought, Okay. So of course I did reach out and I thanked them, but I didn't feel like it was enough, but I also felt like it's insincere to just turn around and do you know the exact same thing right away. So I waited and I kept my eyes open. I looked for something that I felt like would be something they would appreciate. And I found something and I sent them a little care package, but probably almost two months later. And then I wrote them a handwritten card and told them how much their package meant to me and that I wanted to bless their lives the same way. And so I sent them something in return. And I'm not saying, folks, that this is what you need to do. But to me, that's that next level of appreciation. Instead of just receiving something and being like, oh, that's so sweet. That person's so nice. Oh, I really appreciate you. Let me send you a text and say thanks. <laughs> you know, like I went that extra step. And it's funny because the person that received that package, when they got it, told me it made them cry. And then even like two weeks later, sent me a follow up text that said, every time I see this thing you got me, it just, it, it shifts my entire emotion for the day. Like it was the most thoughtful thing you could have done for me. Now that was above and beyond. I wasn't expecting that kind of reaction. I didn't need that kind of a reaction, but because it was a thoughtful way of saying things, because I went that extra mile to really feel grateful and want to do something for them because they had done something so nice for me, we ended up really blessing and touching each other's lives. And, and, you know, it's emotional for them and it's emotional for me to think about. I love that I was able to do that, but they initiated it. And so to me, it's this, you know, how do we take our gratitude to the next level? How do we move from being like, oh, that was nice or getting what we asked for and saying thank you for a minute, but moving on to the next thing where you feel like, oh, but now I need this. It could be my new car. 
You know, I just got a new car and I could be sitting there either focused on how exciting it is to have this new car and be so grateful. Or I could be sitting on like, oh, well, I'd really like to get custom floor mats or I'd really like to get darker tint, you know, and it's, it's whatever, it's just whatever you choose to focus on. You can live in that state of continuous gratitude, or you can just say, thank you and move on. And I feel like in life, most of us have a tendency to do the latter. Most of us say thanks. We feel like we were grateful and we move on where we really don't harness the power of gratitude and the emotion of gratitude. And I said this on the last episode, I've said it on multiple episodes, but the universe is a vibrational universe. The universe does not speak in words. So when we say thank you, if it's flat, if it's non-emotional, it does not have the impact on what we're attracting that when we really feel grateful, what we're attracting when we're focused on that. So Adria, tell me some thoughts that you have on what what I'm saying so far. Well, it's interesting to me because we do, we talk about gratitude so much and yet I'm learning from listening to you that there's always more that can be done. There's always a way to take it deeper and feel it more and just be more appreciative and get more out of it. Yep, for sure. So I think because we've talked about gratitude so many times, I don't feel like we need to really dig into this a whole lot more. I just think it's an important conversation to keep talking about, to keep digging into how can we be better? How can we do more? Because gratitude is probably the number one way to shift your vibration and attract the things that you want. If you are focused on what you appreciate and you're really thinking about it, you can't be having thoughts of fear, thoughts of negativity. Like you just can't entertain those two thoughts at the same time. So your vibration, if you're really feeling grateful, is positivity and love. And that's what you're putting out into the universe. And so the more time you can spend on that, the better your life is going to be, the better you're going to feel. You're going to feel instantly good because you're focused on these positive things that you already have and have experienced, but you're going to be attracting so much more of that. That's like the key, the number one thing that you can do to attract the things that you want is to be grateful, be truly grateful, sincerely grateful for what you have and what you're experiencing and what you already have had or have experienced. You know, it's not too late to go back and re-appreciate things. That's why we talk about gratitude at the beginning of every episode is because it is so, so powerful. So that leads us to our action item for this week. And again, I can't remember if we've mentioned this on the podcast. Adria, I know I've talked to you about it. I may have had it as a previous action item. And if it was, and if you are one of the few listeners that actually did it, I encourage you to do it again because you'll know how powerful this is. And Adria, that is the action item of writing a letter of gratitude and then reading it to the person. Did we have this as an action item before? I think so. I think, I we, think did. we did. Yeah. And I confess I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I believe our listeners probably heard it, probably thought it was a good idea, probably had good intentions and probably did not do it. And those of you that did, I promise you, if you do another one, it will be so powerful. So for those of you that missed that episode or have forgotten what the letter of gratitude is all about is choose someone in your life that really has had an impact. It could be someone that you talk to daily. It could be your significant other. It could be a sibling. It could be a parent, or it could be someone from your past, like an old school teacher that really had an impact or an old, um, I don't know, piano instructor or whatever. It could be anyone in life that has had a powerful impact on you. Take the time to sit down and hand write them a letter of gratitude. So it's not a thank you card. It's not just a couple of sentences. It's an actual letter. Writing is a lost art. Write it by hand in your handwriting. Don't type it, write it, write it on paper. And then you're going to give it to the person, but you're not just going to give it to them. When you give it to them, you're going to read it to them out loud. And then you're physically going to give them the copy so that they have it. And it is so, so powerful. This was an action item from the Happiness of Wellbeing course that I took. 
and look into it. If you're interested, it's on Corsica. It's a free course. It's called the happiness, or excuse me, the science of well-being, not the happiness. But this is one of the action items. And it was so hard for me to do. It wasn't hard to write it really, other than it made me ball. I cried the whole time because of course I'm sitting thinking about how grateful I am for this person and how I should have told them all these things all of these years. But then when I gave it to the person and read it to them, of course, it made them ball. They cried. They could not. I mean, it's uncomfortable to say those things. That's why we don't say them, even though we mean them, even though we feel them. It's awkward to have these emotional conversations face to face and then give them the letter. So that's the action item for this week. If you did it last time, you know how powerful it is. Do it again. But I'm betting most of you either have not listened to that episode. It was probably in episode two that we gave this as an action item. But if you didn't do it, I encourage you to do it. Take the time. Take the time to sit down, write a letter of gratitude to someone. Really feel grateful while you're writing it. Give it to the person and read it to them face to face. And if you can't see them face to face, which in my case, when I did it, I couldn't be in the same place as the person due to COVID. So I did it over video call. I can't remember if it was Zoom or something else, but I got on a call with them. I could see them on camera. I read it to them. I cried. They cried. I mailed them the letter. It's one of the most beautiful things I've ever done. And I encourage you, Adri, to do it. I want to do another one. There's someone else I really feel could use it right now that I really should be saying thank you to for a lot of things. And that's our action item for this week. Adri, do you have anything you want to add on this topic of sincere gratitude? No, but I love that we're talking about it again. Well, it's a good topic. We'll talk about it over and over, I'm sure. But we don't have a winner this week. So please leave us a review. Leave us a review on any platform and you'll be entered into our giveaway for a free bracelet. Adria, do you want to tell our listeners about that giveaway? Yes, we have pictures on our website, which is www.attractitwithease.com pictures of the bracelets. If you want to go take a look, they're really beautiful bracelets. Each one is a little bit different. They're gender neutral and they have, they're unique because they each have a different theme word. So anyone that reviews our podcast on one of the platforms, we will do a drawing from those names each week and the winner will receive a bracelet of their own with their theme word. That's right. So the winner gets to choose their theme word for the year. And if you don't know what we're talking about, refer back to episode one, where we talk about selecting a theme word, but we will stamp your word on a custom bracelet just for you. And we'll mail it to you free of charge. So leave us a review. When I say we don't have a winner that this week, that's because we don't have any new reviews. So leave us a review. You have a good chance of winning. And If you haven't already done so, go back and listen to episodes one through 10. They're our jumpstart module. Those 10 episodes were designed to go together to help you jumpstart all of the desires of your heart. And we have a workbook that you can download from our website for free that goes along with those uh, 10 episodes. So check that out. And again, let us know what you think. We'd love to hear from you. Adria, that's it for this week. It was nice chatting with you. Look forward to next week. Thanks. It will be great to talk to you again soon. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye.